long time no see. I was watching We Can See and decided maybe it's finally time to record some videos. Also, watch some Kotam Chess. Yeah, you know, he's pretty good at this entertainment business. I'm more boring, but that's fine. I still like to try my luck every now and then. So, Anish Giri won. Um, quite impressive and surprising because he's usually too solid to win any tournaments. Um, the first round he faced Fabi. And it's just, just a solid system Fabi's is playing here. This is actually what Hikaru likes to play, knight f3, e3. He has especially played a lot of blitz games, but also classical. Just trying to avoid uh, main main theory. And uh, Fabio avoids playing d4. If he if he played, then it would be just a uh, queen's gambit accepted. Now it's something else, so he's um, playing some kind of fresh position, hoping to get something sharp, maybe a win. But this a4, yeah, I'm not sure if I can recommend it. The knight on b1 is just too stupid, cannot get out, especially because the pawn is still on d2. So white is just quite passive here, and Anish gets a very comfortable position with uh, with very natural moves. Doesn't have to think too much. Knight d4 simplifies the position. And knight c5. And here Fabi makes a mistake and takes the pawn. Somewhat natural, but there's a ta tactical problem. Uh, better was just to take uh, the knight on c5, play knight e5. And Black is a bit better due to his bishop pair, but not too much, just a little bit. And knight d4, knight e4. The problem is uh, Black can promote a pawn on the queen side because it's two against one. And the center pawn is not really moving anywhere. The bishop on e2 is. Um, too bad because of we have the bishop on a6 putting pressure there along the diagonal. Fabi was counting on this queen a2, hoping that the knight would have to move back and then queen a5. But instead, knight b2, very sexy move from Anish, and bishop f6. Um, unfortunately, this is a this is a mistake. Um, it's very natural to pin the knight, but this actually lets White off the hook and allows him to simplify the position. There was a very complicated sequence of moves that would have led to a winning position. E4, knight d2, rook c1, rook c1. Bishop c5, knight f3, a3, queen a1, rook d8, knight b3, bishop f2, king h1. And this pawn on b4 and a3 more than compensate for the lacking piece. But still, I have to say, th even this position is uh, quite complicated and not so easy for humans to play. But yeah, I mean, obviously, if they got this position, the top grandmasters would quickly realize this is good for black. But it's not so easy to see this when you have just 20 minutes on the clock and you have this alternative move, bishop f6. Fabi takes, queen a2, nice move. Just gives up the piece back just to get the pawn on a5. And the white queen is too active here. Rook c6 looks like um, there's still some hope to win. Next rook b6 and black would just promote the pawn. Unfortunately, queen a4 is a very harmonious move. 
attacking the rook. If rook b6, there's a checkmate. So instead, Anish defends the rook with the queen. But now it's just rook b1. You cannot defend the pawn. Again, rook b6, there's checkmate. So h6, queen b4. It's a draw. Anish can take on d3 or uh, exchange queens and rook c1. Either case, it's just a draw. Unfortunate, but you can't win all winning positions. The next round, Anish faced Kukesh, one of the young prodigies. Nowadays, there's too many to count. The Ragosin defense, very popular among top players. I don't think I have ever played it myself, but I'm not a top player, so. Oh, this looks somewhat natural. C5. And knight e4. <laughs> White plays uh, some in between moves before he takes on d4. Trying to take uh, away some options from black, I guess. Queen e7. Now the queen is, I guess, slightly worse on. Uh, uh, slightly more passive now than on f6. a3. And finally, Anish captures. Back the pawn. Rook c2 looks kind of interesting, but the point is seen very soon. Bishop d7. So the bishop was quite bad on c8, so black hopes to activate the bad piece. Rook e2. So now we see the point. The rook is x raying the queen. Hoping to play d5. Bishop c6, queen c2. Bishop b6, not the best move. A bit too slow. And it allows white to play rook e1. The bishop on a5 was controlling that square. So now it's kind of misplaced. And king h8. So black was afraid of all kinds of tactics that were happening here along the diagonal. So he moved it away, but it's too slow. Black is just behind in development way too much. And there's just no time to play moves like that. And Anish just Unleashes the full wrath that he can with knight g5. So, first, a knight sacrifice. And now the h file is open, but also the rooks are ready to unleash. Unleash the dragons. Rook e6. And another rook comes in. Queen e6. There's really nothing else to do. You can move the queen somewhere, but then knight g5, and there's gonna be a mate on h7. But still, at the moment, black has two rooks and a piece for the queen. So if he can just uh, get his king safe, uh, he can even win. Bishop f3. Looks like a great move. No more knight g5. Queen f5, like a very strong move. Threatening queen h3, and then it would be checkmate. And if you play rook d4, we just play queen f8. King h7, bishop f5, and black will be mated soon. So black tries bishop e4. 
queen e4. So he gains a little bit of time. Rook d4. Unfortunately, the final mistake. I could have still tried rook e8, give up the rook for the bishop, and play an endgame with rook, bishop, and knight against the queen. And there was still some hope to get a draw. But instead, rook d4. And now beautiful move. Queen f3, very, uh, very effective. Stopping mate on d1, going to h5 and f8. So doing three things at the same time. g4. Yeah, the king is just in, in too much trouble here. Bishop c2. And Kukesh resigned. Queen h8 is coming. Black still can't develop his pieces. Rook on a8 and knight on b8 are kind of useless here. And the black king just will be, uh, will be checkmated soon. Queen f5 and or queen h8. It's a very nice game. Very nice game from Anish. It kind of feels like he played like a well, like an AIM, like me. He lost kind of too easily. But, you know, sometimes shitty things happen. On the third round, Anish played uh, against Maxolo. And we get our it Italian defense here. Nothing new. A5. This is somewhat rare. Usually people play uh, a6, but this also makes a lot of sense. Makes room for the bishop and uh, stops b4. Bishop b5. I guess we can call this the drawback of playing a5. White has this. Uh, possibility of avoiding the trades and the bishop can even go to a4 to c2 and maybe some kind of attack along the diagonal bishop a7 white was gonna play d4 and we uh, protect an, uh, our knight and also, d5 was a threat. Bishop g5. And yeah, this always means things are going to get very complicated. g5. And bishop g3. Here, he could have also just done this very typical sacrifice, and things would have been very, very complicated. And yeah, but this is very difficult to calculate what's going on. And this time, Maxolo played it uh, safe and just went back. Rook e8 takes, takes a bunch of uh, trades here. Knight a3, maybe knight d2 was more natural, just defending. The pawn on e4. After this, white has some trouble with the pawn on e4. So he has to push. But knight h5 and d5. And the knight, uh, the pawn on e5 is actually kind of isolated. King f1. Nothing too much going on here. And they agree to a draw here. 
White can, for example, play uh, knight f3 to defend the pawn on e5. Still, I have to say, I would of course continue here for uh, for both colors, but especially black. I feel like he could play for a little bit more. I feel like this a5 could be kind of annoying to defend. But uh, Anish, as usual, he doesn't like taking any risks. And a draw is a fair result. On the fourth round, he faced the big boy, Magnus Carlsen. And Magnus goes for the Queen's Indian. He doesn't have a good reputation nowadays. Um, I mean, Alpha Zero kind of beat Stockfish in some beautiful games. Um, Karyakin has defended this opening a little bit, but it's always involves some kind of suffering. And there are just better ways to play for draw. So it's kind of surprising Manus went for this. But he does like to play uh, different openings. So in that sense, it makes sense. Um, so d5, this is the typical pawn sacrifice. Uh, white opens lines, the diagonal is open, the d file is open. Uh, black wastes time because he's taking a pawn. And black also wasted time because he played bishop a6 and bishop e7. The e file is also open to the king. So it's uh, kind of dangerous for black. Knight c6, this is a typical defensive move here. If rook d5, there's knight b4. And black wins. So instead, queen f5. Attacking the knight, finally. The queen can take it. And also, the queen is putting some pressure kind of like everywhere here. Knight f6, e4, the pawn is going to e5, and d6, kind of surprising because it looks like it's not stopping e5, but there's this tactical move, queen d7, and this is actually a very nice move to know. This happens in a lot of positions, this kind of defensive tactic. And it often comes as a surprise to your opponent. And somehow magically, black is, you know, black can still fight here. Somehow there's no good uh, queen move for white. For example, queen f4, knight h5. And somehow the knight is fine on h5. I don't really understand it. We can only trust the engine. Black can even maybe castle long. So instead, white just captures and takes on d6. Bishop f6, rook e1, king f8. And Magnus has pretty much blitzed out all his moves. So he purposefully went for this position. And yeah, I don't really understand it. Might just up a pawn. Um, there's some compensation. The pawn on d6 can easily drop. It's not so easy to defend it. And black is somewhat active here. Still, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go for this position myself. This is just seems too risky. I don't really know what are the benefits of doing like this. But yeah, gonna say it's hard to understand Magnus. 
like when I asked for his signature, he said, fuck you. So, yeah, he's a mysterious man. Knight c3, another possibility was knight a3. Somehow the computer wants to take on c3 and play this position, but that's very hard to do. The bishop on f6 looks uh, so strong. Knight b4 instead. Knight e5, very natural move. Wanting to trade some pieces and maybe win the game easier. I mean, that's the traditional rule when you're up in material. Trade pieces so you win the game. But here it seems maybe it was a slight mistake. Uh, white kind of uh, loses some time here. After these trades, like right now, it's white to move. The rook is on d8, and if we go back, it's white to move, and the rook is on a8. So we don't really gain much here, except the bishop. We lose time to get the bishop pair. But the knights actually look quite uh, active here. So this was not the best idea. Knight c4, d7, knight c2, a slight inaccuracy. I mean, Magnus could have just uh, attacked the pawn on d7. If bishop c8, knight d6. And yeah, how do you defend the pawn? Not so easy to see. Instead, he went for this, which also looks great. Like you activate the knight, and there's no way to defend the pawn on d7. But the rook on b1 is actually in a better place now. And b4. If black takes. One of these knights will drop. So instead, Magnus takes on d7. But he misses the next move. Bishop d5. Somewhat simple, but took Magnus uh, by a complete surprise. Just attacks the knight. What can he do? He moves it. But now we take. And now the rook is very active on b1. When the pawn on c5 is very weak, king is 7 and we just take it. And the king on e7 is just terrible. Knight e6, bishop e4, maybe a small mistake. Seemed like it was better to actually play uh, knight e4 here. It's hard to play like this because <laughs> you really want to keep the bishop. Bishop pair, like the pin going on, but you can't argue with the computer. Rook c7, and there's some kind of mm, like you, you can see that the knight is suddenly actually also doing a fantastic job, and the king is completely stuck on d8 and we can even take on f7 if you take it's gonna be checkmate but it was very natural uh, to just go back keep the pin alive but here there was maybe a way for magnus to fight fight for uh fight for a draw by just taking the knight Play knight f5, and it seems like there's no easy win at the moment. Instead, Magnus played this kind of tactical move. I'm not really sure what he missed. 
because uh, Anish just took, takes. Rook c8, knight e4, knight c4. It's possible he missed maybe rook a7, bishop b4, takes, takes on d6, bishop b7, king c7. And now this check on c1, and you cannot defend the rook on c8. Maybe. But even this one, it just looks kind of strange. It would be very hard for me to even think think like that. I don't know, it just feels like it will never work, that kind of tactic. So knight c4 instead, but the knight will be pinned. White cannot take on c4 because the rook is hanging on d1. But we are not in a hurry. Knight c5. Nice tactical move. C4. Rook c7. Bishop a5. And Mangus resigned. Next, white is just gonna play uh, bishop b6. For example, let's say rook d7. Bishop b6. Bishop d6, bishop somewhere, let's say bishop f3. Bishop g4 is even coming. Rook is coming to c1, and why is this gonna take the knight on c5? There's nothing, nothing to do, and we even have the pawn on a2, just for extra measure. So yeah. <laughs> Again, it feels like the game was kind of like too easy. Like from the start to finish. Anish didn't really have too much trouble. And Magnus played too much with the fire. Um, on the fifth round, he faced Ragnaranta. But Ragnaranda himself has beaten Magnus, I think, maybe two times in online rapid games. So again, we get the Italian. Knight c3. Somewhat rare, usually white plays c3 and aim to play d4. Knight c3 is popular among uh, beginners because this is ac exactly what they're taught to play. Develop your knights here, uh, your bishop here. Then put your bishop somewhere. But even top grandmasters sometimes play like this. A6. Uh, I guess the point is that if black plays d6, white can play maybe knight a4 to capture the bishop on c5. So first make Luft. White does the same. So black cannot play knight a5. There's room for the bishop to go. Also stops b5. h6, bishop b3. White, uh, black just copies, plays it safe. Um, and Brock, he takes on e6. Maybe, maybe I can't recommend this. Because usually when you play this kind of system with the knight on c3, you just put it for, forward where it wants to go. Because right now the knight on c3 doesn't really actually know, doesn't know what to do. It cannot go anywhere. And maybe uh, black can utilize this f file somehow. Castle and maybe like knight h5, knight f4. So it's somewhat uh, dangerous. D4 was played. White could have also taken on C5, but then, even though we have these double uh, pa uh, double pawns, two double pawns, we are completely controlling D4, and it's very hard for White to make progress. 
So instead d4 was played to open some lines. Queen d3, castle. Well, I could have even castled queen side, but this is, I don't know. You have to be like sheer off to play like this. This looks like it's just too easy for white to play d4, like rook b1, b4, b5. And somehow you would have to play like a5, and this is just too much, too much to play like this. So instead, Anish, as usual, plays solid. Rook f7. Nothing much going on here. Black is slightly better. But this one, I don't know why he went back. The knight was perfect on uh, c6. Um, making the rook on a4 passive. For example, black would have played king f8 to e7 to centralize his king. So for some reason Anish decided to lose some time. C6, D5, maybe not necessary. And another uh, strange decision he takes back with the C pawn. Because now he has three pawn islands. If he could have taken back with the E pawn, and then he has one big island on the queen side. Now it feels like he has two weaknesses. He has the e6 pawn and the b7 pawn. Computer says it's fine, but to me it feels feels uh, quite strange. Rook b7. This g3 move is quite nice, stopping uh, rook f4. King g2, g4, and h takes g4. A mistake. Oh, I instead should have played h4 with the hopes of someday playing rook e1, rook e5, rook h5. He will lose the d4 pawn, but I don't know. It's, go it's just the computer says so. It works. <laughs> and it also it makes sense. Uh, this h5 pawn is indeed quite quite a big weakness. And if you ever also win the g4 pawn, then you can really promote some pawns. But this head Brock just took and it's quite difficult to attack the pawn on g4. So the game quickly peters out to a draw. A bunch of exchange exchanges happen. D4. And yeah, this is nothing, nothing to do. Yeah, that's it for now. I will continue later. Look at all the all the games left. Bye bye for now.